Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Is it on? Can you hear me? Any luck? Now it's working? <coughs> Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, Council Member Joe Borelli, Chair of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management. I want to thank the public for attending today's hearing, and I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the committee members who are here, uh, Council Member Amprey Samuel and Council Member Cabrera, who's already left, who's already, uh, you know, just found it necessary to be somewhere else. Very, very nice of them. Um, regarding the subject of today's hearing, the committee will conduct oversight related to the impact of automatic sprinkler systems on fire suppression in New York City. In addition to the oversight portion of the hearing, we will hear introduction 826, which seeks to amend the New York City Administrative Code uh, to require the FDNY to report on the use of fire sprinklers in fire-related deaths. During today's oversight portion of the hearing, we want to know how automatic sprinklers are regulated by the FDNY, including the agency's take on the necessity and efficiency of such systems, as well as the process for inspections. As our city has seen a robust increase in real estate development over the past decade, we want to examine the department's process of inspecting the growing number of sprinkler systems, both old and new, that are located throughout our great and ever-expansive city. Additionally, we want to make sure that our city's bravest to continue having the resources they need to protect the public. Furthermore, the committee wants to explore the scope and frequency of sprinkler inspections, as well as discuss whether any additional training is given to probationary firefighters regarding the enforcement of fire code sprinkler requirements, as well as what enhanced training is given to veteran firefighters and fire officers. In addition to the oversight portion of the hearing, uh, we'll hear 826, which I discussed earlier in my opening remarks. We anticipate the department will provide testimony on this legislation, allowing us to gain a better understanding of their position on the proposed uh, reporting requirements. Uh, I'd now like to ask those members of the administration who plan on testifying to please state your name for the record and to raise the, your right hand as the committee council administers the oath. Anthony, uh, Assistant Chief Anthony DeVito. Julian Basil, Fire Code Council. Chief Inspector Lewis Sendegorda. Uh, do you firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to answer honestly to council member questions? I do. I do. I do. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. By the way, who writes this? Is, is this all you? We, we need a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, <laughs> a, a literary tools, you know, to make it more spicy <laughs> next time. Um, gentlemen, please. Good afternoon, Chair Borelli and all of the council members present. My name is Anthony DeVita and I am Assistant Chief of Fire Operations for the New York City Fire Department. I'm joined today by Julian Basil, Code Counsel for the Fire Department and Louis Santagorda, uh, Chief Inspector in the Bureau of Fire Prevention. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about the impact of automatic sprinkler systems on our fire, on fire suppression. Sprinklers are an important, highly effective tool in suppression. Automatic sprinkler systems have the ability to control an incipient fire and provide precious time for occupants of the building to escape and for the fire department to arrive before the fire spreads. Put simply, the presence of a working sprinkler system helps us save lives and property from fire. The positive impact of sprinklers on deaths and injuries in a fire is profound. This can be demonstrated by looking at data from fires in locations with sprinklers versus locations without. According to research published by the National Fire Protection Association, uh, the NFPA, in structural fires during the time period of 2010 to 2014, the civilian fire death rate in fires in properties with sprinklers was 87% lower than the rate of civilian fire deaths in properties without an automatic sprinkler system. The civilian injury rate in fires on properties with sprinklers over the same time period was 27% lower than the injury rate in properties with no sprinkler systems. The NFPA points out that many of these injuries occurred in fires that were too small to activate the sprinkler or the initial, uh, in the initial moments of the fire before the sprinkler operated. The impact of sprinklers on the safety of first responders is also significant. 
According to the same NFPA research, the average firefighter fire ground injury rate in locations uh, with sprinklers was 67% lower than the injury rate in locations where no automatic sprinkler system was present. As members of the New York City Fire Department, we are not experts on the cost of sprinkler installations and we would defer to our fellow city agencies regarding those figures. However, as a potentially useful reference, we are aware that a report on ho home fire sprinkler cost assessment uh, conducted by Newport Partners for the NFPA in 2013 noted that the median cost was $1.22 per square foot and also that these costs have been decreasing over time. The council may wish to explore this topic further with local partners in order to understand the specific dyna dynamics of the New York City market, but it is worth noting that the costs for this valuable tool are not exorbitant. <coughs> From the standpoint of safety and fire suppression, expanding the use of automatic sprinkler systems in the city of New York would be a positive step to take. We are aware that other factors such as cost and the burden of new construction figure into the conversation. We also know that our fellow eight city agencies such as the Department of Buildings and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development would have valuable contributions to this discussion. We'd be happy to work with the council and our agency partners on this topic. <coughs> I'll now briefly address the legislation being considered today, Introduction 826. Introduction 826, sponsored by Council Member Brannon, would require the fire department to include information on the usage of, usage of fire sprinklers in its annual report on civilian fire deaths. The legislation would require the yearly report to address for each fire the following, whether a sprinkler was found, the age and type of the sprinkler, testing and maintenance of records, testing and maintenance records, and whether such sprinkler was operational and activated during the incident. If this bill passed, the department would be able to comply with most aspects of this legislation. However, we would like to clarify for the council that while the fire department personnel do witness periodic testing of sprinkler systems, building owners are responsible for the more frequent routine tests and maintenance of sprinkler and standpipe systems, and the owners maintain such records. The department would also not be able to include such data in our report. Uh, the department would also not be able to include such data in our report. Also, depending on the incident, there is often a practical difficulty to determine the age and type of sprinkler. However, due to the degree that it is practical to make a determination in the course of a given fire investigation, we could include in the annual report whether a sprinkler was present, the age and type, and whether such sprinkler was operational and activated during the incident. Okay, we would be happy to uh, take any questions at this time. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Assistant Chief. Um, before I ask any questions, I want to acknowledge, and I don't want to alarm anyone, but we've been joined by uh, Council Member Allen, the, the madman, Maisel. Uh, just, you know, I, I don't want anyone to, to get upset, so thank you for coming. Um, can, can you just take us through, uh, just in a nutshell, in, in layman's terms, what what generally would trigger the the need for sprinklers? What what uh, is it a building height? Is it the building age? Is it the street width? Uh, what are some of the regulations? Can I just say, uh, uh, yeah. Um, first of all, sprinklers are required as by based on the type of occupancy, and this is in the New York City Building Code, not in the Fire Code. Um, most building types uh, of a certain size are required to have sprinklers, whether they be assembly, factory, residential, office, um, all different types the building code now covers. Um, the uh, one large uh, occupancy group that is not currently covered would be one and two family homes, and even some of those are covered if they get to a certain size. Uh, additionally, the building code also regulates buildings, um, all high-rise buildings these days are sprinklered. Uh, high-rises above six stories or 75 feet. Um, in addition, the, both the building code and the fire code require sprinklers depending on certain businesses or activities that may be going on. If you're storing, storing large quantities of hazardous materials um, or if um, uh, cooking systems, um, various kinds of uh, 
equipment, uh, you may need to have a fire suppression system for that equipment. Um, are there building types or, or uh, use types, use groups, that you would prefer sprinklers be installed in that are not currently installed or by, by law not installed? Well, I think it's fair to say the fire department is in favor of sprinklers uh, as a general principle uh, in, in all occupancy groups. Uh, obviously, there are serious practical considerations we're aware of in terms of costs. Um, I should point out that what I re just referred to are um, the current building code requirements, the requirements that may have been in effect uh, since 2008 or in some cases uh, back to 1968 building code and in some cases all the way back to the early years in factories. But um, there are many existing buildings that don't have sprinklers. Um, and yes, in general, the fire department thinks it would be a good idea in the long term for uh, buildings to be sprinklered. Are there any sprinkler requirements being considered as part of the fire code revision? Um, as I indicated, uh, the requirement for a sprinkler based on occupancy would be in the building code, and okay. it's a building code revision issue. Uh, but is there anything in the International Fire Code that addresses this that um, well there's a couple of things uh, there's a couple of things first of all um, the international building code uh, international fire code do require sprinklers in one and two family dwellings additionally there's something called the uh, international existing building code which the uh, New York City is, uh, the Department of Buildings is in the process of studying and, and, and considering for adoption. That code attempts to address when to require that buildings brought up, be brought up to current code requirements, including sprinkler requirements in existing buildings. And it's a rather complicated um, uh, issue uh, because of both cost and, and design considerations. Right now, the New York City Building Code, the primary key to bringing buildings up to code uh, is based on the cost of the alteration. So it, it's usually very, you know, gut renovations or very substantial alterations would require that existing buildings be brought up to code. In some instances, there are specific compliance deadlines, such as for office buildings. All office buildings are supposed to be retrofitted with sprinklers by 2019, I believe. Um, but in general, um, this is a complicated issue, and the International Fire Code does have provisions for it. So for a smaller one- and two-family homes, how do we define substandard streets that trigger the need for sprinklers? Okay, so this was a concept that was introduced in the 2008 Fire Code, uh, which we based on um, the International Fire Code with some uh, New York City amendments. The, the basic idea is that in New York City, um, there, are, there are model standards, there are standards for model streets. Um, they typically are 50 or 60 foot wide easements, and when they use that term, they include the sidewalks. So um, the, the typical 50, if you were building a brand new road in a, in a uh, sort of as of right, you would typically have a 34, 34 foot wide roadway um, with um, 18, uh, I'm sorry, eight foot sidewalks on each side, which would make a 50-foot easement. In some in wider areas, if you were building a, a, a boulevard, it might be even wider. So we, uh, well, in, in the 19, 2008 code, we took the, uh, the, the wider 60-foot easement. In the 2014, we scaled it back. So basically, right now, we operate from the basic principle that a, a full roadway should be 34-foot wide, and that would allow parking on both sides. Um, and that we use it. Now, there are situations we recognize in, um, in smaller communities or, or <coughs> smaller developments where we bring it down to uh, 30 foot. But basically, the idea is, and we learned this through somewhat bitter experience in Staten Island and other places of the city, is that when you don't provide adequate roadways, if you say, well, we'll provide a narrow roadway, but there's no parking, there's never enough parking for people, and people will end up parking in places where they're not supposed to park. And when there's parking on, on streets that are designated for no parking, it does make it more difficult for the fire department to get through, especially when people then double park or, and do things of that sort. So in general, our code works from the basic concept that we want to have a 34-foot foot, 30 wide roadway now with parking. Now, if we don't have that, 
the code requires that in certain circumstances, if you're altering a building or putting a new building in, we want that building to be sprinklered, even if the building code doesn't require it to be sprinklered. And that's typically one or two family homes. Uh, just turning to the inspection uh, of, of systems, so, so just, I know you said this, how many FDNY inspections are required per year versus how many uh, private owner inspections? Um, yes, uh, one and two family is not required to be witnessed, whether it's testing or inspections by the FDNY. There is a section in the fire code that says that it's the owner's responsibility to make that sprinkler system in perfect working order. When we start talking about three families and, and up four families, there's different types of testing, but basically you will see a fire inspector once every five years at that premise to witness some type of testing on the building, depending on the occupancy and the type of system. Because there's different types and then of how, testing. How, how often are the owners required to, in, in like say a three family building? <coughs> well, if it's a three family building, they don't have to follow the NFPA 25 standard. They could do the old standard, which is monthly record keeping. So once a month, someone has to do a visual inspection of the sprinkler system. Um, as far as the, the inspections on a five year, uh, a five year repeating cycle, is there a backlog on inspections? And, and no, we have a, a, rot a rotating list that obviously something that's not due today is due tomorrow, and we do book the appointments. So uh, it's every day we keep on adding maybe 150 appointments a day. So it's a it's a rotating schedule. So and uh, uh, how many how many uh, inspectors conduct sprinkler inspections? Uh, I have 41 right now. And they all have a license. They have to be licensed. Um, it's either a master fire suppression piping contractor, A or B license, or a master plumber. Okay. And uh, how often, uh, as a percentage, are sprinkler systems uh, found to be non-functioning at uh, perfect levels? Um, very low. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have the numbers, but it is very low. So in your opinion, if a sprinkler system is properly installed, it, it, it's not likely to fail for, for no reason? Um, is there any evidence for, uh, you know, regarding the effectiveness? Is there any national evidence uh, regarding the effectiveness of sprinklers versus a non-sprinkler building? Um, yeah, Chief. The, right, uh, in, the, uh, in my opening remarks, uh, as far as the injury and, <coughs> and uh, fatality rates are considerably less in, uh, in uh, structures with, with a uh, sprinkler system present and, and operating. Uh, so. Yes, the answer is yes to that. There is a uh, marked uh, decrease in injury and, and fatalities when a, when a sp operating sprinkler system is, is present. And is there any coordination between the FDNY and DOB regarding uh, the installation and inspections of sprinkler systems? Well, um, the DOB is responsible for the installation, approval of the installation, and the uh, ac acceptance of the installation through whatever procedures uh, are provided in the building code. Um, once the system is legally installed and approved, um, the fire department takes over and conducts its uh, periodic in, uh, inspection of, of the flow testing or other type of testing. Um, do, do you think NYCHA buildings should be sprinkled or, or should they be left as is, the ones that aren't? Well, I think, as I said before, the fire department is generally in favor of sprinklers in, in, in every building, but we recognize that there are significant cost and practical considerations of retrofitting buildings that, you know, many buildings may not have, they don't have drop ceilings, they don't have uh, shafts, so actually putting one in can become ex ex uh, quite costly. Council Member Ampre Sam. I was going to ask a question about the NYCHA buildings, but, <laughs> um, but uh, just for point of clarification, um, when you talked about the requirements under the fire codes for multiple dwelling buildings and you said under the one and two family dwellings, it just depends on the size. Um, what I've been seeing is a lot of homes that have been converted, um, like in our brownstones within the community, they used to be three family and now, you know, uh, folks are paying $2 million and now they're just one family. So um, can you describe like what, um, in what instances are one and two family dwellings, depending on the size, included in the fire codes? And if the example I gave is one of them? Well, it's a little complicated. It's mostly in the building code. Um, generally speaking, um, existing one and two families do not have to be sprinklered. If you change the use of occupancy from a one and two family to a multiple dwelling, a three family or more, you do have to, under the building code, you'd have to sprinkler it. Um, 
the, when you're restoring a building back to a single family, um, you may not have to maintain the sprinklers, but you would have to ap apply to remove them if you decide to do it. Right now, the building code only requires sprinklers of one or two families if they are above three stories or in a row house. I'm not quite sure exactly, but it's not your typical um, single family detached home. Now the fire code, we got involved in requiring sprinklers of one or two families because of the substandard with streets. So if you are an existing home on a substandard with streets, uh, narrow street, we don't require you to do anything. However, if you alter your home uh, and you put on a large addition or you raise the roof, under certain circumstances, we want you to sprinkler the building. Basically, if you're ripping open the, the walls and the ceilings, and uh, you know it, it would be appropriate for you to put in a sprinkler system at that time. Um, but basically, in general, right now, if you're building a small home on a uh, standard width street, you, the building code would not require that you sprinkler it. Let me just ask one more thing. One more. Um, um, yesterday I had a meeting with um, an organization, a company that um, has a contract with NYCHA to do all of the fire um, safety where Johnson controls. They have a 50 million contract with NYCHA to do all of the fire safety um, upgrades throughout the developments. Um, have you, uh, or are you working at all in collaboration with um, NYCHA and this contract? And um, do you know if um, the upgrades to the fire and safety codes um, include any of the sprinkler systems? I'm not personally involved in that. I'm not sure if we're aware of what you're referring to at this time. But we may be, the fire department may be, but um, I don't think we're aware of that. No, okay. I, I don't have any information on that uh, right now that I could follow up. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I just have one, uh, one last question. Um, in terms of s the use of sprinklers in conjunction with other fire suppressive measures, whether it be re retarding walls or, or doors, um, I mean, do you think it's enough to have those other measures, or it, will sprinklers add to the overall uh, safety of the building? In other words, is, is it fair to say that if we have some fire retardant walls and some uh, door suppression or something like that, we don't need sprinklers? Well, the fi fire retardant walls and, and fire doors, well, the purpose they serve is to keep the fire and whatever com products of combustion within that area, but the the benefit of the sprinkler in that same space will um, will knock down a, a, a fire in its incipient stages, so the fire doesn't have it get a chance to get past those uh, those enclosures or those uh, those walls or those f uh, fire uh, doors. So the sprinkler is um, would be definitely. Um, uh, you know, something we'd want to see in addition to any other fire safety measures that are, uh, you know, structural or partitions or, or, or doors. So uh, basically to knock the fire down before it, uh, it, takes, uh, it takes control of more of that than just that area. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I just want to say thank you, and uh, may, may your turkeys not set off any suppressive sprinkler systems this Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next panel. Thank you. I'd like to call up Melissa Barber and Patrick Dolan. And if there's anyone else who'd like to testify, just fill out one of these, <coughs> hand them to the uh, lovely sergeant at arms. Thank you. Hi, 
Um, good afternoon, uh, Chair Borelli and members of the uh, Council Committee on Fire and Emergency Management. My name is Melissa Barber, and I'm with the Mechanical Contractors Association of New York. MCA is comprised of 130 member firms, including the New York Fire Sprinkler Council, who uh, employ a steam fitters local 638. MCA represents licensed contractors that are responsible for the installation, inspection, testing, and maintenance of fire suppression systems in tens of thousands of high density residential, commercial, and industrial buildings, including hospitals, universities, power plants, and water treatment facilities all across the New York region. We represent the most competent, informed, and highly skilled contractors in New York City and Long Island and regularly provide internal and external educational seminars for programs for our members that further the life-saving message and the importance of proper fire protection. I'm here today to discuss the importance of fire sprinklers and to testify in favor of intro 826. Research and data support the fact that fire sprinklers save lives and prevent property damage, thereby preventing displacement. However, the City of New York has not passed significant fire sprinkler legislation for residential buildings since 1999. Yet residential buildings fires continue to plague the city, and particularly older buildings, including the majority of uh, New York City Housing Authority apartments that are not required to install sprinklers if built prior to 1999. These are often the buildings where the most vul vulnerable populations live. According to the FDNY 2017 annual report, there were a total of 3,279 accidental fires with 1,075 people injured and 73 lives lost in last year. Just this year in the Bronx, we faced the deadliest fire the city has seen in 27 years, which killed 12 people, injured 14, and displaced 22 families. We can and must do more to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Aside from firefighting and explosion, fa explosion fatalities, there has never been a multiple loss of life in a fully sprinkler building um, due to fire or smoke. The death rate per 1,000 is 87% lower in properties with sprinklers than in properties with no automatic extinguishing systems. Smoke detectors are not enough to save lives or prevent property damage. And when a fire begins in a sprinkler building, only the sprinklers closest to the fire go off to contain the fire area and completely put out the fire, preventing displacement and saving families money, money and ultimately also saving money for the city of New York. All too often, displacement is left out of the larger conversation on fire prevention. The common misconception is that the sole purpose of fire sprinklers is to give more time to escape fire. However, the fact is fire sprinklers control 99% of fires. In properties with fire sprinklers, flame damage was confined to the room of origin 97% of the time. And according to an NFPA study, from 2007 to 2011, Fires in high-rise buildings cost $219 million in property damage each year. Sprinklers are cost-effective, and retrofitting high-rise buildings is easier because buildings 75 feet or higher in New York City already have standpipes on each floor that the FDNY connects to. These standpipes provide the infrastructure to accommodate fire sprinklers. At the same time, owners and residents of high-rise buildings with fire sprinklers receive discounts on their fire insurance. For all these reasons, the New York uh, Fire Sprinkler Council urges our elected officials, city agencies, and all authorities having jurisdiction to consider mandating fire protection, fire sprinkler protection in occupancies where they're not currently required. Just as important, we also urge New York City jurisdictions to ensure that the fire sprinkler and standpipe systems currently installed in their locales are properly inspected, tested, and maintained. I'd like to thank Council Member Justin Brannon for introducing 826, which requires the fire department to report on the use of fire sprinklers and fire-related deaths. We do not currently have New York City-specific data, and therefore this legislation would help capture the impact of fire sprinklers on fires in New York City, and also allow lawmakers to make informed policy and decisions based on this data. While we support the intro, we'd like to see the reporting provision period lengthened from, from 2022 so that we have sufficient time to, for the period to study. We believe that extending the reporting period this legislation will be critical to prevent future fires by helping learning from past mistakes, and the MCA supports all attempts to promote fire safety in New York City. Thank you for your time today. Uh, thank you. Uh, Patrick, please. Good afternoon, Council Member Borelli and other members of this important committee. 
My name is Patrick Dolan, and I am president of the State Local 638, representing 8,500 men and women. Our members install and maintain the fire sprinklers, pipes, heating, and cooling systems that act as a circulatory system for tens of thousands of buildings in New York City and throughout Long Island. Because of that, I can tell you firsthand how crucially important fire sprinklers are in saving lives and containing the damage from fires. Those facts will become even more clear if this bill is enacted and we are given more information about the role of sprinklers in fires. Hopefully as a result of this increased transparency, the city will be compelled to further action in increasing requirements for fire sprinklers. What do we know about this? According to a study by the National Fire Protection Association, the death rate per 1,000 fires was 87% lower in properties with fire sprinklers and fire damage was confined to the room of the origin for 97% of fires where sprinklers were present. Fire sprinklers are the first line of defense and with the increasing use of highly flammable building materials and furnishings, which causes modern fires to burn 800% than they did 40 years ago, sprinklers are more essential than ever. They are among the most effective means we have of mitigating the tragic results of fire and we must continue working to ensure that these residents and workers in all buildings in New York City are afforded that vital protection. Over the decades, we have worked with the City Council to add and strengthen sprinkler requirements for buildings. This work has led directly to a long, persistent decline in fire deaths. Since the first fire high-rise sprinkler law was enacted in 1973, fire fatalities have steadily dropped from about 300 a year in the 1970s down to a record low of 48 in 2016 and staying well below 100 per year for the past decade. This did not happen by an accident. It is the result of sustained advocacy, increasing knowledge of the effectiveness of sprinklers, and most important, legislation that repeatedly expanded the required use of sprinklers. This bill before you is another step on the journey towards universal fire sprinkler protection in New York City buildings. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, thank you. I have, I have one question. I'm not sure uh, who wants to answer it. Um, the cost of installing a sprinkler system, do you have a rough estimate of the cost per square foot in a building that already has standpipes on each floor versus uh, a building that's not? Either either you guys could. I would it would pertain. I mean, my, we work for the, uh, the contractors of the MCA. I, the, uh, a contractor would be able to uh, give you that answer. I could uh, definitely do some research on that mm -hmm. and see. I mean, I've looked at um, Chicago has a voluntary retrofit right now, a big high rise, and they were coming out around $4 a square foot. Um, but it, it, it really is so also- do you, do you know if those buildings were standpipes already? Yes. Okay. I, but it's. I think that you know it is going to depend on the building type, the age, the. But you know we'd be happy to to work on some of those figures and get some estimates uh, for the council if that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else who would like to come and speak, to talk about this bill or anything? I mean, for that matter, we could. Thank you. This uh, adjourns the meeting.